Kind of a big effect that you create with beat edit are like pushing the playhead forward or also backwards in this case here in sync with the music. So let's see how we can create these kinds of effects with beat edit. So here in After Effects I have our three clips in this timeline and let's first see how they are looking like without any camera mapping. Okay, so to make this a bit more interesting, let's time remap this. We first select our music layer and load it into beat edit. Now here you can see and hear the click sounds that make up our beats. And now the idea is that each of these, at each of these movements, we want to like push the play act forward or also sometimes push it forward and backward uh, on those beats to make those clip look more interesting. So I select the first one of them, right click and say time, enable time remapping. And now we have here essentially a slider on which we could keyframe, like if, if you change this value here, backward and forward, it will move the playhead backward and forward. And this is essentially what beat edit will now do for us. So we go to the beat wiggle and go here to the slider section because this time remapping is essentially a slider. And now we have some presets that we can start with here for time remapping. This one pushes the player forward on each beat. This one pushes the beat backward and forward in an alternating fashion. And this one puts them backward and forward in a random way, also with a random amount. But let's start with a very basic one here that is just moving the player forward and is looking pretty cool actually. So um, before we really apply it, or let's maybe first apply it with the default setting and see how this is looking like. So we select it and click apply. You can see this generates here a lot of keyframes and it's looking like this. So you can see that with the beat always you have this speed up where the playhead is pushed forwards. You can see that here you have no keyframes and this is simply because this clip is not very long and by pushing it forward and forward you reach the end quicker than usual and so at this point we already reached um, the end. And this keyframe was a keyframe we had before, so if we undo, you can see this was the original keyframe from our time remap. And due to technical reasons, beat edit always sets a keyframe at the very end. This is why you have these two keyframes here if we redo this again. Okay, if you take a look at the graph editor, then you can see what we see now is we don't have a linear line for linear playback, but it's like at each beat you have a speed up and then it slows down again. So these kinds of patterns is what you can create here on the playback speed. Okay, so if you want the clip to reach the end not so quickly, what you can do is to push the playhead a little bit less on each beat. So we go here in our settings to the value and say instead of pushing forward one second on each beat, let's say we just want to push forward here, let's enter a small number 0 0.6. Now before you reapply this, it's very important that you undo. And this is because otherwise it will apply a second round of wiggling here like on top of the existing keyframe. So now we have our back our normal playback and so now it will apply it on top of the normal playback, which now will look like this. So now I said that this beat wiggle is always applied on top of the existing keyframes. So we started with a time remapping enabled, which means we had normal playback speed and nothing special and applied the beat wiggle on top of that. Now instead of starting with normal playback speed, we can also start with a freeze frame. So let me select this property and simply remove it by hitting the delete key on the keyboard. And now time remapping is disabled again and we right click on the layer and say time freeze frame. And we were here at the first frame, so now you can see the footage is not moving at all. If we now apply, oh, and now it asks me if I want to create a new slider and I say no, and this is simply because I had no property selected, but just the layer. So since Beatwiggle can work with any property, you have to explicitly select the property that you want to apply it to. So we select the time remap property and click apply. And now you can see the keyframe pattern looks a little bit different because we started with a keyframe and now only at each beat, the time is pushed forward a bit and in between it freezes. So it's only moving at the beats and this looks like this. So to summarize, if you just enable time remapping and then apply the beat wiggle, then it will push the player forward on top of the normal playback. And if you instead start with a freeze frame, then it will 
push the playhead forward on top of this freeze frame and like pause in between. Very different effect just by how you start it. And of course, in principle, you could even go more fancy and say you start with a freeze frame, then you push it around based on some beats with some settings here, and then you select some other beats, change the settings and do a second round of pushing the playhead around. So this is very flexible. You can even iterate it in several iterations if you want, but I think usually it's not necessary. So now let's take a look here at the second clip. And for this one, we want to do it a bit differently. Namely, we want to try this preset to move backward and forward randomly. But let me also set the work area to only this clip here, because you can see by default, the beat wiggle writes keyframes in the entire work area. So also for this clip here, we've written keyframes here far in the back where this clip is not visible anymore. So to keep it clean, now we set the work area here and we enable time remapping for this second clip here. And now it will write keyframes only this area and no keyframes outside. So again, we start with our default playback of this clip and we click apply. Let's see how this is looking like here in the default settings. This looks pretty interesting. So it's be being pushed backward and forward in a nice and fancy way. The only thing that is not really great is that here at the beginning, we have some freeze frame, we have some pause. And this will be sometimes the case, not always. If I undo and try again, now it's for example, not. So by its nature, um, the random variance, the random preset here will always create a different result. And the point is, it's pushing the clip forwards and backwards randomly. And if we start at the very beginning of the clip and it decides randomly, let's first go backwards, then, well, there's no room to go backwards if you're already at the very first frame. And this is why then it's clipping the animation at this point and instead of going backwards, it stays at the frame and then you have these like holes in your animation, okay? There are two ways of avoiding this. The one thing I've just shown you, just apply it several times, undo, apply again, undo, apply again, until you find a random order in which it moved forward first and hence didn't create such a pause. The other alternative, let me undo here, is to say, okay, actually we don't need to start our time remapping at the very first frame of this clip. We could, for example, say, why don't we start around here? This clip is very long. It's actually much, much longer than the parts that we have visible here. So we could say, let's use this first, like, 90 degree rotation up to here as a room that allows us to go backwards right at the beginning if you want. So we set here another keyframe, we delete this keyframe and move this one over. And now our animation starts here. Yeah, starts with the car looking at us. And so now we've got room and now it's much less likely, let's apply it again. Now it's much, much less li likely that uh, here you have a hole. Okay, so if you wonder how this backwards forwards thing is configured in the option, you can see the most important parameter you want to change is here is the amount. And it has this randomize. This randomize is hidden here behind this, this twirly. And uh, so it's currently set to randomize max both sides. This means it's not always pushing two seconds forward, but it's pushing up to two seconds both sides, which means either forward or backward. And this is why this time remapping moves in, in both directions, okay? Now let's finally take a look at the third preset here, which is just time remake back and forth. This is very different in the options. It has two different amounts here specified, one and minus one, and no randomization. Yeah. So this means it's essentially just moving forward and backward, forward and backward in an alternating fashion. So if we play it back here, you can barely see it, but it gets better if we set here the clipping range to like, one to ten this clipping range involves it if it's set to none which means it's not it's not clipping at all but still these numbers control the range that is visualized here and you can see it's moving between zero and one back and forth in a very regular fashion yeah it's me and this means if we apply it on top of a freeze frame it will be very boringly always playing back and forth back and forth one second and if we apply it on top of normal time remapping, which is what we want to do now, so time, enable time remapping for the third clip. Let me move over the work area. 
And now for this clip, clip we want to do, use this uh, move backward and forward preset. We select the time room map and apply it in the default settings and it looks like this. Uh, this is just in a very regular way moving forward and backward uh, in time. On the first beat moving forward, on the second beat moving backward again and so on. And since it's applied on top of the normal playback, still we have some progress going on here. And again, of course, you can play with those numbers. You can play with the easing and whatever to fine tune your result. And last but not least, I also want to mention that, of course, you can use the beat selection to say, I don't just want to push forward and backward the play height in a very regular fashion. I also want to uh, like select some extra beat markers. Uh, let's say, select some here, and let's see how this is how this sounds like. So from the clicks, you can see that there's a more interesting pattern going on here. So let's undo our previous time remap and let's do it again. This time with all these extra beats selected. So we go to the beat wiggle and apply it again. And now let's see what this looks like. So you can see this again looks very different and you have a lot of control exactly how this animation should behave to the beat by selecting those beats, selecting the right preset and adjusting the parameters of this preset. You really have full control. If this is not enough for you, there's also another tool available at Ascripts that we don't develop here at Mamo World, but that's also pretty cool for time remapping beats and it's only for time remapping uh, to the beat. It's called Beatnik. And one of the great things about Beatnik is that it can work with markers, also markers that are generated with beat edit. So if you like the, a bit different approach of Beatnik, but still want the accurate beat detection and this power to select these um, extra markers here from beat edit, you can combine the two tools by first generating markers with beat edit and then using those beat markers to beat wiggle with beatnik. Okay, so I hope all of this gave you a comprehensive overview of how you can time remap footage in sync with the beat to create pretty cool effects. Again, this is Matthias for mamaworld.com. Have fun time remapping your clips and see you next time.